This video is part two of a two-part series where blackjack expert Henry Tamburin gives eight tips to become a winning blackjack player. The fifth tip is to take advantage of gambling coupons when you play blackjack. Gambling coupons can be used when you play blackjack. For example, they have match play coupons. You can bet, say, $10 with your own casino chip. You put down a $10 match play, and if you win the hand, you'll get paid $20. $10 for what you bet and $10 for the match play. So there are different types of coupons, gambling coupons, match plays, two-for-one, blackjack, and others. Get them and use them. They all have value. They all help reduce your house edge. You can get gambling coupons either from the American Casino Guide book, and you can also get the book of coupons that you get when you subscribe to the Las Vegas Advisor newsletter. So both of those sources uh, allow you to get these gambling coupons and use them when you play. Tip number six is how to bet at blackjack. Most blackjack players will use a progressive betting system when they play blackjack. By a progressive betting system, I mean they're basing how much they bet on what happened on the previous hand or hands. Most players will increase their bets if they lose the previous hands. And you see this all the time. A player loses five hands in a row, what is he going to do? He's going to increase his bets. Why? Because he's making catch-up bets. He just can't dread having a losing session. So the player might lose $100 making small bets, and now all of a sudden he's making catch-up bets, and then within the next 15 or 20 minutes, he's lose the rest of his bankroll. Just because you increase your bets, if you're an average player and you're not a card counter and you're not a basic strategy player, that's not going to change the odds. That's a recipe for a disaster. So you have to play under control. The facts are these. There's never been a study that correlates the win-loss of the previous hands to what's going to happen on the next hand. So you can use a progressive betting system till hell freezes over, but it's going to do absolutely nothing to change your odds of winning that subsequent hand. So progressive bettings may be fun, and it may be uh, once in a while you're going to hit it big, but in the long run, it's not going to change the fact that you're still going to be facing a negative expectation. So what can you do about improving your chances of winning when you bet at blackjack? The way that you have to bet is you only want to increase your bets when you know your chances of winning the next hand are good. And the only way you're going to know that is what happened in the previous hands as far as the ratio of little cards to big cards. Now, why do we have to look at this ratio? Because there have been gazillion computer studies that looked at what happens if I pull a specific card out of a deck and I play blackjack. Does it improve a player's chances of winning or does it worsen the player's chances of winning? And all these computer studies show that the small cards, the little ones, the two, three, four, five, six, are not very favorable for a player. They help the dealer more than a player. The large cards, the 10 jack, queen, king, ace, are the ones that help the player more than the dealer. So if you sit down, for example, at a two deck blackjack game and you watch the first round and you see a lot of little cards and maybe only a couple of big cards, and the dealer scoops them all up, puts it in the discard tray, and now he's ready to play the second round, you have valuable information. You saw a lot of small cards in that first round. That means there has to be a lot of large cards left in those unplayed cards that are going to come out in the next round. This is the opportunity where you want to make a larger bet because your chances of winning now have increased. So, how do we manage and how do we track these small cards and big cards? Well, the answer, of course, is card counting. 
And as soon as I mention card counting, most average players run for the hill and say, that, that's not for me. It takes too long. It's too much mental arithmetic and so on and so forth. What I'm suggesting for recreational players is to use what I call entry-level card counting systems. These are card counting systems that have been developed, say, within the last 10 years, specifically for recreational players that allow them to change from being a gambler where the house has the edge, and that's even a basic strategy player, over to where you have a positive expectation and you are no longer a gambler, you are now an advantage player. And that is a wonderful feeling if you are a blackjack player and you know because you have these skills that you are now an advantage blackjack player. You can easily cross that line by learning any one of several entry level card counting systems like speed count, which is extremely easy, uh, the rookie KO count, the KISS card counting system, the ACE-5 card counting system. All of these systems are available in the, on the internet or in different blackjack books. They're all relatively easy to learn and to use. And again, by using them, you're now using a technique which tells you how to bet in blackjack and it allows you to cross that line from being a gambler to being an advantage player where you have an edge. Now you're not going to have a tremendous edge like a professional card counter that uses an advanced level card counting system like high low or any one of the other advanced card counting systems. But again, they take months to learn. What I'm suggesting is you use a simple system which takes very little time in some cases, a, just an hour or so. And now when you play blackjack, you'll know exactly when to bet more money. Tip number seven is basically about playing blackjack sensibly. For example, when you play blackjack, you have to have a bankroll. You definitely don't want to play blackjack with what I call scared money. You don't want to play with money that you need to pay the rent, to pay a car note. You've got to play with money that you've set aside, discretionary money that if the worst happens and you lose it, it's not going to be a financial crisis in your life. And I recommend that players take a sum of money, open up a money market account, call it a 401G, G for gambling. This is the money you set aside that you're going to use to play blackjack. You take out a certain sum, you play blackjack, Win or lose, whatever's left, you put it back in. And that's the money you use only to play blackjack. Second, you want to make sure you don't overbet when you play blackjack. Even a recreational player, if he sits down at a $25 table, minimum bet table, and he's got a $200 bankroll, the chance that he's going to go broke is extremely high. So you have to bet in proportion to your bankroll. If you have a minimum amount that you can afford to play blackjack, then you need to be sitting at a minimum blackjack table, $5 or $10. Now, if you're a card counter, things get a little bit sticky here because it's extremely important that you don't overbet if you're a card counter. It's one of the principles I spend the most time teaching when I teach card counting is this whole concept of risk of ruin. So if you learn an entry-level card counting system that I mentioned earlier, make sure you understand how much you should bet versus how much bankroll you have. That's very important. The next common sense tip is drinking. I know a lot of players like to play blackjack and they like to enjoy the free alcoholic beverages. I have never in my 50 years of playing blackjack Maybe in one instance, have I ever seen a player who's inebriated winning money? You have to have a clear head when you play blackjack. So yes, you can have some uh, alcoholic beverages when you play, but do so in moderation. Remember, you have to concentrate on making the right play and making the right bet. I and mean, if you're, you've had too much alcohol, this is going to become extremely difficult. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to lose money. 
And keep in mind, when you are sitting at a blackjack table and playing in a casino, the whole atmosphere in the casino is designed to be exciting. I know it's a lot of fun to play blackjack, but think about what the casino does to encourage you to lose your money and feel good about it. I mean, we have a lot of distractions in the casino. For example, cocktail waitresses. I mean, most of them are very young and very attractive, and they're scantily dressed. That's a distraction. The drinks are a distraction. The loud music is a distraction. The dealer talking to you is a distraction. You have to stay focused. When you play blackjack, you have to have that game plan. You want to go to a table that has a good set of rules. You want to have a sufficient bankroll. You want to have your blackjack strategy card or already memorize the strategy. And you only want to make bets when you have the edge. And you have to stay focused on all of those things and block out everything else that the casino puts out there to distract you. The other thing you want to uh, be aware of when you play blackjack is that you're always going to find when you play blackjack, the majority of the times, there are going to be side bets on the blackjack table. These can be bets such as the lucky ladies or the uh, royal match. There, there's a whole cornucopia of side bets that the casino puts on blackjack tables. And the reason they do that is they want to increase their revenue from a blackjack game. And the come on of these side bets is they're usually you can only the, the minimum bets are a dollar and if you win these side bets you generally will will win more than a dollar they have high payoffs the issue is that most of them have a very high house edge and if players continually make these one dollar side bets hand after hand after hand that high house edge is just going to grind down their bankroll that's not to say that all side bets are bad. There are some side bets where you can actually gain the house edge by using a specific counting system. And again, I encourage you to go to my ultimate guide to blackjack. I've got a chapter on side bets. And I also go over the ones that you can get the edge by using specific counting systems. Now, what about these blackjack variant games? Nowadays, you're going to go to a casino and you're going to see games like Blackjack Switch, Spanish 21, Superfund 21. Now these are all Blackjack games that have different rules and more importantly, they have different basic strategy than the basic strategy that you would learn for the traditional game of Blackjack. And unfortunately, most players they learn the basic strategy for blackjack and they sit down at a Spanish 21 or a uh, blackjack switch game and they use that same basic strategy. That's a recipe for disaster. If you want to play blackjack switch, you have to learn the basic strategy for blackjack switch. And you also have to learn the switching strategy for that game. The same thing with the other blackjack variants. So be careful when you play blackjack. If you want to make side bets, stick to the ones where you have a chance of winning by a specific counting system. Or if you want to play one of the blackjack variant games, make sure you learn the basic strategy for those games. If you follow these eight tips that I've just covered, you've now on your journey from being just an average blackjack player, you can easily become what I said earlier is an advantage blackjack player, where now when you play blackjack, you have a good chance of winning more money than you lose over your lifetime. If you want to learn more about blackjack, I encourage you to read my new ultimate guide to blackjack, which is available on the 888 Casino website, and it's free to read. You can also go to my website bjinsider.com where you can read back issues and current issues of the Blackjack Insider newsletter and you can also get three free emailed issues by simply going to bjinsider.com forward slash 
free trial.